sense at all to you that you felt like uh, maybe there is something to this shit? No, a lot of it made sense. Good. Yeah. I might convert you yet. Hmm. <laughs> To astrology, Matt. To astrology. Oh, oh, I was going to say, my goodness, Dr. Kevin. <laughs> I wouldn't look good in one of those hats, if you know what I mean. Well, you know, you've got, you've got what, 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 be a hero. You got the be the hero hat. There you go. So now the rest of our time is kind of yours to lead, Matt. We're throwing you under the bus. What's going on that you think we should be talking about? Or... What do you think people aren't talking about that they should be? Oh, I don't know what people are, aren't talking about that they should be. I mean, I, there's really one front burner issue at the moment that's kind of dominating everything. And that's uh, the uh, 24, uh, 2024 election, in my view, is already over. And I guess uh, begrudgingly, uh, congratulations to MAGA. Uh, I there can't. Was a, Not there yet. Was, now, there was a, well, you know, that debate recently, I mean, uh, we basically saw in real time uh, Joe Biden handing the keys to the White House to his opponents. So, yeah, this one's over, kids. Sucks. Breaks my heart to say it, but this one's over. So, how, so the only stop gap, if you are correct, and I'm going to say if. If you are correct, I mean, it's not too late. Biden could still step down and God knows if anybody else goes up against him, not Biden, but if anybody else goes against the tramp, I don't <laughs> give his name airtime. Um, if anybody else goes up against the tramp, he's got some real cognitive deficits showing up big time. And, you know, you know, it wasn't just, oh, Biden stumbled during the debate, but every but but so few people are talking about what was it, 317 fact checked lies or something that Trump said. And we know MAGA is not going to change. This is all for the independents. Mm -hmm. The independents are the ones that's going to make the difference. You're you've been preaching that since I had a little hat like you're wearing before it expanded. Um <laughs> and you know, to get the independence to see the cognitive ability of Trump is really not these good these days. If you're looking at the transcripts of the speaks he's saying and the stuff and the nonsense, I mean, would I like to see Biden pass the torch to somebody else? Yes. I think if he did, that it's not an oh, I don't think it's an over game. If he doesn't, I think it's going to be an old fashioned horse race, but I still don't think it's settled. I mean, I think that just, there's going to be some dependency on how well do they get the message out of, did you read what he said? And of course, I'm sure you've looked into Project 2025 mm -hmm. and Agenda 47. Ashley, do you know what we're talking about with Project 2025 or Agenda 47? I do not. Matt, you want to explain those? Yeah, the well, it's basically just the Heritage Projects, uh, which is a very conservative uh, organization. It's their sort of blueprint for the future. And, you know, just a lot of things like um, rolling back anti LG. I'm, I'm sorry, rolling back LGBTQ plus rights and mm -hmm. uh, eliminating things like Medicare and Social Security. And just, you know, it's kind of a, a, you know, a far, far right extreme conservatives wet dream, just everything they could possibly want. Um yes. Yeah, that, that's basically what it is. But um, as far as the debate goes, you know, I, I uh, as, as you know, as I had said many times, I was dreading it uh, because I've already felt that Biden was likely to lose this election just because of his obvious uh, deterioration. And um, the debate itself ended up being far, far worse than I had even imagined. So I was I was shocked. And I said, no, that's that's. And by the way, Trump. You know, all, all the lying with him, I think everyone's kind of desensitized to it. Um, I actually was surprised that uh, early calculations were that he told about 30 lies during that debate. And I was surprised the number was that low. But Trump, he played it smart. You know, he didn't try to 
over talk or shout down Biden or anything like that. Not a lot of grandstanding from Trump. He kind of played it straight. And I, uh, I hate to give him credit for anything uh, because I think he's uh, uh, truly uh, evil. Um, but uh, I will say, uh, just as a political analysis of his performance, I thought he I thought Trump was good. He came off, I think, much more focused and in control of his messaging uh, than he does during these freewheeling campaign speeches where he says a lot of crazy stuff. Um, tr for Trump, I actually thought it was one of his better debate performances in terms of his discipline. And um, also, the as, as someone pointed out, Trump is very animated with his hands when he speaks, whereas Biden is very, you know, his... If he even tries to be at all animated with his hands, his hands move very, very slowly, like they're just kind of creaking um, in, in every way. I mean, Trump just seemed so much. He seemed younger. I mean, he is younger a few years, but not much. But he seemed so much younger and more vibrant and vital and strong and and uh, coherent and uh, articulate, not usually terms I would use to describe Trump. But in contrast with Biden. Biden mumbling, losing track of what he was saying at one point. I mean, very early in the, the debate when Biden declared that we had finally beaten Medicare, I was like, this is this election is over. I, I, and and it's, it's showing in the polls. This is um, I mean, I, I think it's I think it's probably going to be a landslide. Polling data shows all the swing states now are tilting toward Trump. I mean, the blue states will still go to Biden, but swing states, they're all they're all going to Trump. And there's no way to reverse this. Um, they have another debate coming up in September, which obviously will be, you know, very close to the election. And so by that point, you know, Biden will be even a, a couple months older. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be any better. If anything, it might be worse. So um the only way to save this is for Biden to say he's going to step aside. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people think that that's risky because then you're getting somebody else in there on such a, on such a short notice, but it's the only shot. I promise you, I know this with every cell of my being. And again, it breaks my heart, but I don't say this as a prediction. I believe I'm speaking this as fact. If Biden stays in, Biden will lose. Um, there's just no getting around it. And the down ballot effect of that will mean that Republicans are going to have full control uh, when we get into 2025. It's, it's just the reality. And I think both parties are so pathetic and embarrassing. You know, the Republicans, because they've become this cult, <clears throat> this reactionary cult that revolves around Donald Trump, the most obvious con man that I've ever seen in my lifetime. And they treat him like he's the risen Christ. That's pathetic. And the Democrats are also pathetic because this all could have been avoided and they should have pressured Biden to only serve one term and then be done and get somebody much younger uh, in there who could handle Trump. Um, and they didn't do it. And, you know, I mean, I, because long before the debate, I was predicting that Trump was going to beat Biden in 2024. This is how pathetic the Democrats are. And I, I probably said this the last time I was on with you too. I've been saying this a lot. Um, with the Democrats, you have a party that will tell you all day long, well, we have to save democracy. Our very democracy is at stake. Okay. So what are you going to do to save democracy? Apparently nothing. We're just going to sleepwalk our way into the election and just let democracy be taken by Trump. Oh, but it's very important that we save democracy. Okay. So you're going to fight for our democracy, right? No, we're Democrats. We don't, we don't fight for things. We advocate for things. We'll advocate for saving democracy, but fighting for it. Ooh, yeah. Not really into the fighting part. Hmm. I mean, you know, they're, they're, it's like I posted something on social media the other day. It's two sides of a very ugly coin. On one side, you have a party that is so ruthless and vicious that they're willing to resort to outright fraud to try to overturn an election to hang on to power. And then on the other side, you have a party that is so comfortable with losing that they're just like, oh, this is a very important election. But eh, eh, if we lose it, we lose it, whatever. 
Biden even said as much during that George Stephanopoulos interview. Mm-hmm. When Stephanopoulos asked him, well, are you going to be, are you going to feel bad if you lose? And Biden's like, no, not at all. As long as I know I gave it my best. That says it all. That sums up the Democratic Party. As long as they feel like they did their best, losing is just fine. Not as good as winning, but it's okay. We don't mind losing. And that's, you know, I always say, I mean, Democrats will bring a, a knife to a gunfight. And if it's a, if it's a knife fight, they'll show up with a plastic spork. So they're not up to this. This all could have been avoided. They're not up to this. And, and uh, you know, it, it, no, this election is over. Sucks. But I promise you it is. I know I'm right about this. There's there's no way I'm wrong on this one. And it breaks my heart. I've never wanted so desperately to be wrong about something in my life. But I'm not. Time will tell. We don't have much time. That The election's only a few, you know, think about it. I mean, November will be here before you know it. We don't have much time to write this ship. And every every day that goes by that Biden is dug in, and is showing no signs of of uh, of leaving. Uh, it's 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 you know we need to we need to do this if we're gonna have have any chance at all. We need to make this change now, but no one can force him to do it. Did you see the um, the letter that George Clooney wrote? Yes, devastating, devastating. But and he's right. He's, he's right. right. It's all really sad, but. So I agree with you. I don't think that this race is over. Trump and Biden, like, call it quits. But I'm holding on hope that the Democrats will bring someone else in and Biden will step down. The question now becomes, because I've looked at, because, you know, you can never trust polling numbers Mm -hmm. at all. Polling numbers I saw was, Kamala actually did better than Gavin Newsom because you know, we look at her as the first choice and they say that she would definitely grab, grab more of the black vote, which Biden for some reason is losing. Mm-hmm. And women and younger people are polling, are, are she polls better with. Mm-hmm. And Gavin doesn't po- doesn't poll quite as well. Did you? I don't know if you know the 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 reference I made. It came out like a came out shortly after the debate. Like they polled, like who would we stick in here that could go go toe to toe with Trump and would poll better? Did you see that one? Uh, I've I've seen so much, so right. many polls and so forth. I'm not sure. You know who the number one one was? Who? Michelle Obama. Oh yeah yeah yeah. You know what's funny about that too? Yeah, she polls very well. You know what's funny about that too? If the Democrats actually did that, they'd be fulfilling a right-wing conspiracy theory because <laughs> for for years and years and years now, the right-wing conspiracy theorists have been claiming that Michelle Obama is ultimately going to somehow take power. <laughs> uh, the one I saw said that she polled at... 55 to 45 better than Kamala, better than Gavin. It was better than Gretchen. I mean, like they, they polled five or six different people. Um, and she was, she was like above all of them by several percentage points in a Trump matchup. Yeah. And she, she left it her last. Oh, you froze up. Oh yeah. Um, she left it in an Oprah interview a few months ago where people were saying, you know, why don't you run for president? She goes, I don't think that's my calling. I've never been drawn to want to do that, blah, 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 blah. But she also said at the end of it, but at the end of the day, if my country needed me, mm-hmm. I don't know that I could say no. Right. Or something like that. It was, she left it like, okay, that crack is there. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? Do you think if Michelle stepped in that uh, the Democrats would have a chance? It sure sounds like it. I'm a little bit skeptical, but I mean, I think anybody would be better than Biden at this point. But uh, but hey, if if sticking her in there is, is what's going to save us from Trump, by all means, do it. 
you know, I'm open to anything. They had a ticket, which would be the nightmare ticket of the conservatives that they proposed, which was Michelle Obama and Pete Buttigieg for VP. Yeah. You would, you could collectively hear MAGA roll over in its grave. <laughs> yeah. If that ticket went up and won. But there are some there are some other very strong uh, potential candidates like uh, Gavin Newsom, of course, Governor Newsom of uh, California, Governor Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan. You've got Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania. Um, there's there's a, a lot of people who I think, for example, on a debate stage would eviscerate Trump and uh, and would be very appealing to independents. So so, again, I go back to. You know, if if uh, if Trump is uh, elected and he will be, um, you know, it's it's <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the Democrats will have deserved to lose um, because I, I mean, how when you look at the Democratic Party, how incompetent do you have to be to actually lose a presidential election to a convicted felon? <laughs> Well, apparently you only have to be that much incompetent. Whatever the level of incompetence of the uh, Democratic Party is currently, uh, you just have to be that level of incompetent and you can lose to uh, to a convicted felon. I mean, it's I'm so angry at, at, at all. I'm angry at all establishment politicians. I'm angry at the Republicans for the way they just fall in line and sell out to Trump. And I'm angry at the Democrats for allowing all of this to happen. How is it that like, like I foresaw all of this and I'm, I don't claim to, to have any uh, psychic ability, but I find all of this to be very predictable. Like, how did I know? But the establishment of the democratic party somehow didn't see any of this coming. I knew it was coming. I've been saying for more than a year, I thought Biden was probably going to lose to Trump. The only thing I didn't see was how bad that debate was going to be. I mean, that was brutal. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm so angry. I'm, I'm furious at the Democrats for letting this happen. And they're just, you know, I mean, you've got some Democrats who, of course, are speaking up much too little too late. And then you've got other Democrats who are sticking with Biden. They're like, no, we're just going to just going to keep sleepwalking forward and then we'll We'll all put on our surprised faces when Trump wins in a landslide, which it very well might be a landslide. If he takes all the swing states, oh, my God. This, oh, it's infuriating to me. So, Matt, tell us how you really feel. I hate how you <laughs> hold back and have no passion to your comments. Yeah, um, I just wish I had I wish I had something positive to offer uh, about the whole uh, situation. But uh yeah. But I, I don't. There, there is nothing uh, positive to say about any of it, <laughs> unfortunately. The positive thing would be Biden steps down or falls down and, and somebody else goes in place well in time for the September debate. And, you know, romance is the independence. Now, you've also always said Trump's going to say whatever he needs to say to get into office, to keep his base happy, to do these things. What he'll actually do in office, how much of how much will he give a care about the Heritage Project? I mean, he's got his Agenda 47, which is on his website, which is also pretty scary, not quite as scary as the Heritage Project. But, you know, he may have been dis more disciplined on that debate stage. He wins presidency and he basically kind of figures out that he has beat the ever going to prison thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could just golf through his whole presidency. Yeah, he, that, that's he, the thing. He, he may not do any of uh, any of these things that we're worried about. He yeah. may not. He might just be like, hey, all right, I made it. I'm president again. I got out of going to prison. Yeah, I'm just going to play golf. Because I don't think Trump at his court, like, like uh, take uh, uh, rolling back LGBTQ plus rights, for example. Do you think Trump really cares? Like, I don't, I don't think he cares about, I'm not saying I think he possibly actually does care about LGBTQ plus people. I'm sure that he doesn't because I don't think he's capable of, 
I think he's a sociopath. I think he only cares about himself. But do you think he actually cares about, like, do you think it's a priority in his mind, oh, we have to roll back some of those protections? No, I, I doubt it. I don't, I, I've never seen anything from him that struck me as aggressively <clears throat> anti-gay, for example. I, so, you know, it may, that, that may be one saving grace. He might just breathe a big sigh of relief once he's reelected and then kind of isn't that excited to uh, enact all these things. But uh, although that's probably being uh, overly optimistic. I'm, I'm looking for some optimism somewhere, anywhere I can find it, because I'm not feeling much. It's the best of a bad situation. Yeah. And it's wow. a bad situation. It really is. Yeah. The only leveraging until, if and until Biden um, steps down is to just keep pushing into people's face, you know, Trump's crazy talk, his Agenda 47, Project 2025. There will be people, and there is definitely a anyone but Trump. They're like, prop mm -hmm. Biden up, I'll still vote for him. I will never vote for him. And that's not just blue. There are independents, and there are actually some Republicans. Sure. Yeah. Oh, there are. There are. Yeah. That are just like, I, I don't care. I mean, Pence has come out and said he won't vote for you know, um, Trump. Yeah. And most of the people that work for him, unless they're <laughs> now over at the Heritage Foundation writing Project 2025, like Ben Carson, um, they, uh, they've all said they won't vote for him. Right. But, you know, they're all afraid. They're afraid to see him in office, even if they left on good terms with him when his thing, when, when, you know, his thing fell apart. So I, I never have, Matt quite have Matt's pessimism, <laughs> but, it, but I don't feel it's pessimism. I feel it's just realism. It's, it's just, you know, well, it's, <laughs> it's lies. It <laughs> and the big if is if nothing changes. Yeah. And what do we know? Everything changes all the time. Everything changes all the time. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I think it's interesting that there has been some block of some of the Project 25 stuff. I keep on reading on Facebook, like, you know, one of the ones that one of the memes people were putting out, they got they got shut down temporarily for a while because they said it wasn't completely <laughs> accurate. I found one meme that I've been able to put out all the time that has little blocks that says all the areas that the Project 2025 and the, you know, I misquoted the 317. It wasn't the lies. I think 317 times the Project 2025 had Trump's name in it. Oh, okay. Besides the fact of all of, I knew 317 was a number. I just, yep, that's what it was. I just took check. <laughs> it's that size. Yeah. Well, we're, uh, we are out of time. We have 15 seconds. Oh, and wow. next week we have. Tom Palladino back. Yes. Talk about scalar healing. Talk about the journey Ashley and I took with getting scalar healing every day from his last visit to today. So come join us next week. Matt, I will see you next month. And who knows? Maybe we'll all be wearing Michelle for President t shirts. Oh, Just, how fun. They'll be tank tops because her arms are divine. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> which, which, which which we bought from her campaign. Yes. Yes. Okay. Did. All right. Matt, great to see you. Yes, you as well. Thank you. See you soon. Enjoy your, um, the full moon and your fifth house. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Fourth house. Mine's the fifth. Yours is the fourth. Right, right. Either way, it's a lot of homes. I feel very wealthy. Ah, goodbye. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you.